each other in officials. And I think I'm kind of viewing this one as, yeah, it's a map that all is comfortable on, but this is a comfort pick that X Direwolves are coming into after just picking up their opponent's map pick. The momentum's rolling with them, and they've caught a player full blind out long with the first man advantage. Yeah, if that's not a good start to a map, then I don't know what is. Long control, well and truly established. That'll be a USP for the taking for one of the T's. Ricky on the wrap behind. This could be a critical timing. Licky did spot into bedroom, has fallen off the line, but still watching and still hitting head. So already a two-player advantage, and it seems like this entire round rests on the shoulders of this peak from Ustillo. He's gotten one. And he's got a few more bullets left in the chamber. His head's been spotted. Savage has more to worry about. Rally and Sim Ustillo, they're stepping up for order when it seemed like the round was done and dusted. It seemed like LFO had won it already. And maybe they still have a one on one. Is not going to go the way of Sterling. Or to find a way to salvage in a three on five. And maybe it's the start of something special. Dusting. I don't even know how they're able to get away with that. Just the classic of dancing around sight boxes, popping up and down, tapping heads. And they make it work. Now into the anti-eco. I mean, there's no bomb plant, but that never stops LFO for going for a force bite. It's going to be the classic. Scouts, deals, and armor. This is their bread and butter. And if you go back to any of the matchups, this is exactly what you'll see. So order, they're not going to be caught off guard by any of these shenanigans. Yeah, Pilski, it might be the last time we see a duel like this one on Dust 2 between the scouts. So you better enjoy it while it's happening. <laughs> I'm not going to miss it, the old patch. It's such a clown fiesta, isn't it? Just the strafing across middle with the scouts. It's, it's led to some amazing moments, to be honest. I think a little bit of me will miss it, as a viewer. A little bit. Anyway, APOC finds the opening frag in this round as well. So two from two so far for opening frags. Gyra needs to be a little bit wary. Or maybe he'll just bite everything off. Gets a lot of damage and the kill and out alive. So that's kind of having your cake and eating it. Oh my god. It's a nice setup as well. Scouts on the line. You see so many low T's. All it's going to take is that one bullet connected. The flank hit from Ustillo as well. He's tagged Savage within an inch of his life as well. But it's a four on three. Numbers advantage. Take it away back from Gyra. And all it's going to take is a couple of shots connected from any of these weapons. And Order's going to win this round. Hmm. Well, there's a nice one from Hazard on to Ricky. Swings it back to a two on three. Hazar picking up the scout and doing some real damage. Valiance can still win this round. He did clutch out the one on two in the pistol four. Oh, he's not going to do it this time. Hazar doesn't miss. Give this man a scout. That's all he needs. Just red hot. And it's again another second round by one by X Direwolves. This is what they do all day long. We saw this happen in the first map. And now Order, they're on that double eco territory. And of course, they're not going to let it go. They're going to go for the full spike. All right. This is going to change the game, this update. There you go, to get the scout tool once again. Sterling's going to pick it up over Valiance. But in the meanwhile, I mean, you still have taken that duel towards long. So it's only a one for one. Has a looking pretty sharp here on Dust 2. And we talk about him being a bit of a win con sometimes for this LFO roster. If he continues in the same fashion that he has the last couple of rounds, it's going to be a tough one for Order. Still, he still has managed to find Sterling up near T spawn. So Order have three scouts to play with. Not sure that'd be the weapon I'd uh, really love to be going up into this round with, particularly when Savage is in a position like this. <laughs> that is clean. Tap, tap. Thank you very much. Hmm. I mean, Deagle picked up. That's going to be two potential weapons that have some firepower that could get some damage done in the next round for order. But Direwolves coming out of that round with three K AKs alive and heading into an anti-eco. That's a great turnaround after losing the pistol. The dream scenario.
All right. What's the buy looking like for order? Not good. Scout for Gyra. And a Deagle for Valiance. And then nothing else behind it of note. Yeah, just save for next. But even after they save for next, I mean, this is a problem with these early rounds, right? When you think about CT side dust too, you want double orbs. You want full utility if you can get it. So these weird buys where you've only got 4.5 or something along those lines, you got to go for something a little bit different. Maybe someone's got to go for an MP9 if they want full util. It's a default from X Direwolves, anti eco. They're working the map, using that utility to minimize the risk, taking the high percentage duels, trying to set themselves up for a more favorable mid to late round where they don't lose too many guns if they can avoid it. Ricky might not have a fun time if he stays up there. It does fall off into CT, so he'll be safe for now. LFO are really not leaving anything to chance. All the util that they could potentially use has been thrown in on that round. And they have APOC watching for the rotations as well. Taking that duel against Ustilo and Valiance eventually does lose his head. But Savage should have this one on lockdown. Sterling certainly does against Ricky. The rest of the uh, LFO roster eventually do chase you solo down. So three and one start after losing the pistol. I mean, you couldn't really ask for much more if you are the T side. Now, though, is when the job gets a bit more difficult. Yeah, first gun round. It's not a super scary looking one. If you look at the CT buy, I mean, lacking a little bit of utility here and there. You're not going to have access to the AWP. You're not going to have any kits for the mid to late round. So still a favorable buy for x Wolves who have that AWP. Fight for middle utility is the name of the game. But there's three CTs here trying to just wrestle the goal of this Ooh. long area. And they've got some trades back. But after all said Look and done, though. they've Look lost mid. the mid, mid pick. Exactly that. Apox cut the map in half. He's the contingency player for Dire Wolves. And all of a sudden, it's ring around the rosy. Order thought they were fighting long. They were fighting long. But that might not have been the most important area of the map, at least as far as LFO is concerned. They're into B. And they've got the bomb down as well, so... This will have to be a save for order, surely. I mean, there's, there's too much riding on the next few rounds where they don't have money. They don't really have much for the retake here either, so... Just try and save these two weapons. I'm not expecting to see much oh. of a hunt from LFO, but if Ricky's going to do that, Sterling will be more than happy to oblige. I mean, you weren't expecting the AWP on that angle after the bomb's gone down on peak. Diables, they do have the money to hunt, in theory. And if I'm not wrong, this is the second CT side that's gone a bit pear-shaped for order, really. They have, again, ended up in the worst-case scenario with no cash to work with. War one. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not really, I'm not really coming into any of these rounds with any preconceived notions anymore after Vertigo. I feel like even if order goes down 14-1 in this first half, there's still a chance they can come back from that. So every round matters. And this one should be relatively straightforward. I suppose that is a preconceived notion. So I've already doubled back on my statement, but well, if I should be able to get through this one pretty comfortably. Ricky's position starting to get weeded out. The flashes are good though, and Ricky is doing some damage. Where's the backup for Hazard? Oh, there it is, Sterling with a collateral. Three guns alive. LFO probably not too disappointed with that. All right, here's their order can get rolling. You know, you talked about that first gun round. Eh, it's like. Doesn't even really feel like it, mate. Don't have access to the orbs. You don't have access to the full utility. This is the real CT buy on Dust 2. This is where Order can make things a little bit more workable. Double orb, full util, two kids. Should have a much better time of things. But the problem is, you got the leg on the cross, first of all. But second of all, look at Dybul's money. 
They're going to have two or three more buys left in the kitty. So auto, they got to win this one and win it clean. Not sure that's going to be the easiest of tasks, even with that double AWP. Like he's going to do his due diligence and clear that corner, even though the Molotov was there. As he jumps up onto short. Too many times we've been seeing in NZ champs, people just sending it up onto Xbox and getting picked through the mid doors. So that's a welcome sight, a welcome change. Mm -hmm. Excite is tagged down to 46 though. So already some inroads being made by LFO. Water's given up the middle of the map for the most part. Playing the extremities. 2-1-2 two two set up. For mid to B does come out. That's where he exactly as highlighted by the observer. Valence has got some some counter flashes to put Gyra through that smoke. Mm. Looks like X Direwolves. They're gonna pressure mid to B. They're gonna throw the utility, try to force out a reaction, then try to go towards catwalk. Molotov does get burned there at the 30 second mark. Hmm, Ricky. Hit some shots, oh. and that is not a bad one. Savage loses his head. The rest of LFO is into the bomb site though, and oh, Apoc, oh, Apoc, oh, Apoc, a double, and almost a triple there as well as Gyra loses half of his HP. Licky's got the info early. He'll just hide himself in place. Oh, I thought Apoc was done, but gets a double out of it. And that swings oh, that the made. round back in the favor of LFO. Oh. That made it so good. Well, wow. they were thinking about the retake, Jordan. Forget about it, mate. Nice exit there from Vexite, but that's about all that he has to celebrate at this point. Both orps lost unless he can salvage one of these on the exit. Finds another peak with his last couple of bullets out of the clip there. He still takes the orp out of Sterling's hands. Hold on. Can we see a double orp salvaged? Not most. Still, I can't quite make it to the second orp, but Vexite does get the one from mid doors. After all said and done, though, ah, they're going to try to put a buy together around the orb. It's not going to be a pretty one. Oh, it That's... doesn't look too bad. Better than I was expecting. Still got plenty of cash for X Direwolf, so... Ooh, quick one on mid to beat. The flash timing is just not there, but Licky... Lucky to be alive, caught that alt bullet through the door, so he's going to keep his life for the time being. But we've we've cancelled that mid aggression for the time being. That smoke on mid to B, and X Direwolf's going to go back to doing the default dance and trying to take some catwalk control. Well, this is one of those things, I suppose. Going to be one of those rounds where. If Order does drop it, they'll be always thinking, what if that kill on Licky would have actually been converted? Still 5 on 5 for now, but HP is starting to become a bit of a problem across the board for Diewolf. Some tags coming into effect. With that said, though, Util's running low on the CT yeah. side. And Util is still great on the T side. They can definitely leverage his utility advantage to win this round. Double smokes on this A execute. Food flashes over the top, and this is where the lurk out long from the three players comes in. He's still on the off angle, trying to keep himself alive. Oh, Vexite starts to grab himself. One savage can't hang on to the control of long, and that's now the bomb dropped. So the job is so impossible oh. for Sterling. Vexite has to really take a bow there alongside you, Stillo. They were the two that made that round happen for Order. Very split on defense. It was Monty Frag or die, and. A good couple of off angles. We were talking about the lack of utility from the CTs, but what little they had, they used to perfection. Great counter flash from Ustillo. Create more space for himself. The one way smoke on the site from Vex site. Beautifully done. Now they've emptied the bank accounts of X Direwolves, but conversely, on the other side of the coin, they've also reduce their loss bonus and it's not like they came through that round that cleanly so losing that pick from the doors it's actually been a pretty massive impact we're talking about the update coming in i mean there's been a lot of picks through the doors from orps and scouts so far and he's the one to lose his life this time around to give a man advantage to the t side yeah, he's thinking why are we still playing on this old patch give me the new one at this point <laughs> ah well five on four 
It's still workable for order, but more or less given up complete control of A. Hmm. LFO could just walk their way in there and get a bomb plant down without too much resistance. Gyra now starting to work his way back. Puts the incendiary down and... You'd almost love to see him post up on the line from ramp onto short, but he's not going to do it. And in the end, that is going to allow LFO in for free. They're going to use some util. In fact, no, barely any. A couple of flashes. A very nice call from LFO. Leaves him with some util for the post plant. And you think this is going to be a tough one for order. Still another mm. Molotov available. Smoke down and save. Well. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, order was set up completely for that mid to beat. They were probably licking their lips. They're, the smokes are coming out. They're like, oh, hell yeah. We've made the perfect call in this four on five. But X Direwolves, they've been doing this all game. They've been pressuring the middle part of the map, lurking a player out there, trying to cut the, cut the map in half. And they've a lot of the time been throwing those mid to beat smokes and then just the one flash over the top and a quick burst straight out a short. That's the second time they've run that exact same sequence. And it's worked out pretty well, pretty high success rate. Mm, this could be where there's a bit of an economy swing. You get the, the full save out of order with pretty good loss bonus means that they're going to have cash to work with in a round or two, even if they do drop this one. There are actually two pretty key saves on uh, full loss bonus on Vertigo that ended up mattering for both teams. Yeah. But this could be another one of those. Sometimes it does pay to go for those four-man saves when you got that full loss bonus. It can really start to make up for a bit of the economic deficit. Oh, this time, Ricky's the one to find the first pick straight through a flash. I think he saw Apoc jumping around the corner just as that flash popped because I think there was a vertical adjustment from him. Anyway, Beckside dancing around in mid, almost lines up three. That's around that has just disappeared for LFO. Now, this is the recipe for success for order in terms of coming back into this half. They've saved last round. Money's looking okay. If they win this round with a lot of guns alive, then it starts to skyrocket, snowball a little bit. It'll be a similar situation to what we saw from them towards the end of the half on Vertigo, which really salvaged things up to 10-5 when it didn't look like they would even get close to that. So, important that they can convert this one with guns alive. Yeah, long control secured by order, which is going to allow Ricky to post on this car line. It's actually going to go on a bit of an off angle towards site. Well, flash up in the air from Sterling, but still a player on the site. And that's Ricky. And he makes it look pretty easy onto Sterling. Still, Ricky gets Ricky. Make a wrap out of that one, Pilski, but. Ricky has other ideas. Well, Licky has other ideas. Oh, dear me. Three on one. He's going to have to get this one on the ramp cleanly, but he doesn't even look. And so Jaira says, thanks for that one. I'll take the AWP as well. Yeah. And this is where you... Uh, this is what I was talking about. This is the money swing. They full save on pretty big loss bonus with four alive in the last round. Now they win with three up and they pick up a couple of AWPs. Oh, actually, only the singular. I thought they were going to get another AWP out of that. Thought Ricky had one somewhere, but maybe they only wanted the single. And now you look at the cash that they have in the bank. It's looking pretty good for order. There was an AWP on short and an AWP on site. So to me, that seems like a conscious decision just to have the singular AWP from No, they order. got two. But, oh, did they get two? Did they pick them both up? Or I don't did they know buy if they them? picked them both up. I thought they only picked one up. Yeah, They've I think got they two AKs, so I couldn't tell you honestly, Jordan. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They've got two AWPs. That's the main takeaway. Yeah, and Direwolves has a lot less money now. Both teams definitely struggling for cash a little bit. But both having a full gun round. Slow approach from X Direwolves. You still are trying to run disruption here. Oh, he takes a dink there from the AK, but he's lucky to be alive. He doesn't even drop his smoke even after that pressure. I thought he was going to drop his smoke towards the backside of Long Heart, but he's still holding on to it. Be very, uh, I, I don't know if greedy is the right word. Just patient, I guess, with his util. Now he has dropped it on heart, so bought himself an extra 10 to 20 seconds with the jump spot. In the meanwhile, it's not like X Direwolves hasn't been doing anything. 
They take that cat control once again, and this has been a win condition for them. Mid to B smokes, and then going straight up cat for that burst. Will they go for that same sequence or do something a little different? Does seem like they are going to commit to the mid to B, but Jaro on the off angle. Oh, Jaro on the off angle, Pilsky gets three. It's A-pot left. That round's disappeared. That I just didn't expect just him to mop up there. <laughs> well, I mean, you wouldn't. You'd expect maybe one, maybe two, best case scenario, and then the trades to come through from Vexite, but no. Jaro's pretty much happy to get it done by himself. That's actually a really swinging play, half. dude. Like, yeah. look at the money. Look at the CT money there. It's already looking kind of good. A clean round win would not only break Direwolves' money, but it also sets up order to have quite a bit of cash towards the tail end of this half. Ooh, I thought they were going to have a think about killing Apoc after time, but yeah, I, I don't mind them just chilling back. No need to throw away extra guns here. Just cement your economy for the rest of this half. I mean, the half's still not secured yet for order. Four to seven could definitely be worse, but they want to make it to seven or eight here at least. And I think that's very much achievable with the position they found themselves in, but LFO to constantly find ways to bounce back, cause issues, be a bit of a problem. And APOC with a hero AK could be a real thorn in their side, not just economically speaking, if he does some damage here, but He's the kind of player that can make round winning plays. Unfortunate the reality is that he doesn't really have anything to help him out here. Not even a single flash for LFO in this round. So Apoc's mm. going to have to find some pretty good timings. Yeah, the objective here for x Diables has completely changed. They were kind of dominating this half. And now it's kind of sw swapped around to Auto has complete economy control, even though they're not in lead in terms of rounds. And now X-Star Wolves, they're going to try and see if they can get any round towards the tail end of this half run boost. Actually gets a lot of space. Valiance almost dies there to Glocks. Uh, bomb plant's going down. And with that, LFO force order to make a play into this A bomb site, which is where kills can start to eventuate. Deagles, dangerous. AK even more so, but... As of yet, hasn't had the impact in the round. Down low, Vexite, but he is going to be dropped. Apoc out of the picture, and now it's on Deliki with the block. You still owe falls. And luckily, it was Valiant around the corner next, because Vexite on 12 HP certainly didn't want a bar of it. Or to get through the round, but not cleanly. Yeah, that got way too close. Considering what Diawolf started that round with. Double Orp is retained, though. Into another T side gun route. Money's still good for, for order, so they're not too worried about how that round went. It's not the biggest deal in the world. But uh, like I said, the the objective kind of moves. The goal pulse kind of moves here for X Diables. Now they're looking to try to scrape a couple of rounds towards the tail end. Oh, it's a great gap from Sterling. This is a scary oh. angle to go around, even if there is a nice flash. Ricky seems to be hitting everything at the moment. The orbs paying off big time for order. Mm. I mean, that's the second or third opening kill that Ricky's been able to find in these in these gun rounds. He's having a good time of things. Actually, that's the second one through a flash that I can remember. He found that one through long as well. He's just got such a good intuitive feel for when to pull the trigger. Oh, this looks like a pretty tough nut to crack. Two players on short, one player in pit. Vexite's been a real rock this game. One here for him, worst case scenario, but if, if LFO can... Dispatch of him without loss, then it makes a big difference. Looks like he's going to try and find the timing. Sterling! I have no idea. Has a trade, but he's done enough there, Vexite, I think. He's got the information that it's going to be an A play. The short players rotate their way up and have a look down long. Ricky with the orb. 
And I'm not sure there's much left in this round for LFO. 22 seconds left on the clock. Ricky, head banged off. That is a nice shot from Hazard. And it's even better because it gets them into the A bomb site with the plant down now. So three on two. All of a sudden, winnable. Mm, it's all about the angles. How well they can ping pong off each other. Has it got a reposition? Takes a bit of a different angle. That is a beautiful spray through the flash from Savage. Hazard gets it done. That's a huge round for LFO. Order. Just when it looks like it's swinging back in their direction, there's another punch headed in their way by LFO. David and Hazard getting it done. I mean, it's not enough to break the economy. I don't need to move the half out, but LFO gets to number eight. Maybe they can push for more. Time out from LFO. Barely scraped through that round. But a round's a round, and they've already gotten the majority this half. T-side's been effective. Money's still good for order, but this could be a massive swing round. It's important. Both teams are going to be pretty broke when we head into this one. So this could be um, a money breaker. Effectively, x is playing for two. Same thing can be said for order here for the most part. Yeah, I thought Order had a bit more cash than they ended up having. It was I saw 10,000 on Valiance. It was a Glock round. Yeah, if I, they I had saw... kept all their guns over, then I think it would, it would, would, they would still be a little bit yeah. better off. I, I saw that 10k on Valiance. I was like, yep, yeah, they're right. They're fine. But everyone else, uh, yeah, a little bit poor. So some drops come through and it really does feel like we might be fighting 4-2 at this point in time for round number 14. Two here for... LFO would just completely change the way that this half feels like it's gone. It feels like an 8-7 kind of a half. And that perhaps a solidifying couple of kills from Valiance. Well done with the orb. The bomb site. The door is shut. Hmm. Well, three on five. Would it be the first disadvantageous situation that LFO's turned around, but They've got really no map control. Sterling's on a, on a scout. It's going to take a, a lot of impressive plays to get them out of this situation. Look, he's going to creep out middle. Well, doesn't commit to searching for a kill there. It does seem like all of the X-Star Wars players are moving towards Catwalk. This is where Ricky, who's actually Arbalus, is playing some of these off angles from the site yet again where he's found success. Okay, we see another clutch from the LFO roster. This time, three on five. Ricky ducks his head back down, pops up at the perfect time to dispatch of Savage as the cross starts to come through from Licky. He hasn't quite managed to hit the initial shots, but still gets the better of Ricky, who missed the shot, left the door open, and again, two players for LFO to make the difference. Gyra quickly works his way up there. With the duel against Sterling and now Licky with 30 HP and a little bit too much work to do will fall to Vexi and give order their sixth round, denying double digits in this first half from LFO. It's going to be close. This is going to be another dead even game. That's not great for the money on LFO though. This is almost certainly an 8 7. This is what I was talking about. Both of these teams essentially playing for two rounds. LFO going to try to put the pieces together here. We'll see what they end up going for. Is it going to be like another scout armor? Are we going to have some AKs dropped over and, and Eagles returned? Because we had some weird break points in terms of the money. You had a couple of guys on 2.7. A couple of guys on 3.7. We'll see what they end up with. Back 10s. It's going to be a quicker round over towards this B site. And it's only Vex site over here. But they call the cancel off the back of that incendiary. Another nice line for Ricky, but LFO won't, won't fall into the trap yet. Ricky tries to shoulder peek the corner, but Ricky once again just a bit too good. He's having a great half here. Running a lot of opening picks with that all. And again for LFO. It's down to a 4 on 5, this time with a couple of Mac 10s and not a whole lot of utility. So APOC. Is going to give another chance over to Ricky, and he'll pluck that one out again. 
It's the orbs that are making the difference right now for order. Taking all the right angles at the right times. Mid to B going to come out here. Great span through the smoke from Gyra. Almost finds two, but you're looking at Vexite swinging out from this position. He's got the cleanup, and that's going to be a seventh for Order. A beautiful recovery in this half. Let's see if they can continue that momentum in towards the second. Cause I didn't get your number So I left you sleeping Put a written note on your bed But you First half of Dust2 plays out a little bit differently than what we saw on Vertigo Pilski. Not too much to take from it, I don't think. 8-7, still anyone's game at this point in time, heading into the second half. LFO on the CT side, order the one round deficit, nothing really to speak to. Yep. Well, uh, it's going straight up catwalk here, putting a lot of pressure, playing very up-tempo. The CT is trying to scramble into position, trying to find the right engagements they've Forfeited catwalk, but a bit of a flank coming out from APOC as they're fighting on the cross. This is a great readjustment and out of nowhere, water just disappears. Yep. That's not the way they wanted their second half to start. Sterling a nice tap to start it off and then APOC just cleaning house on long. A little bit of backup from the rest of the lads there as well, but that's a confidence builder for LFO. It's like... Still. It's like an unintentional bait and switch. They're like all running away towards long and then they had the quick flank in towards middle simultaneously. Yeah. It's like all of the right pieces fell into the right places at the perfect time. Is this second round fourth though from order? As expected, I suppose, although they didn't get the bomb down, so it's not as good as it could have been. LFO do seem to be pretty well prepared to deal with that. APOC, the only one with a Really solid weapon in his hands, the M4. Starting things off nicely. That's what you want to be seeing. 
So mm. numbers advantage for the CT side. It's a bit of a different flavor of the force from Order. You always see the, the Deagle armor kind of split pick from Diabolts. Order yep. playing a little bit more heavily on the execute factor. Yeah, tech, tech nines. nines. Yeah, a bit more utility. They really had a certain plan in mind in this round. They wanted to pressure middle and then I think go for a catwalk execute. But they've lost the first pick to APOC and now they oh. got to go back. Vexite is on the lurk actually. Straight out mid doors with a tech nine. He's made this a little bit more troublesome for X Direwolves who... He got one player cut off from the rest of the team. Hazard's got to hold strong on this B side. Oh, he's got a back up from Licky there as well. Hazza gets it done. Didn't even take any damage. They all turned around to focus Licky. In the end, oh. he will fall as well. That is a 4K with the Famous, which is going to be retrieved by Sterling. And 10 7, the scoreline for LFO. Has a with a very nice hold. I mean, someone needed to step up and get a couple of kills there. It had to be either him or Licky. One of them was the bait. One of them was the one that had to uh, do the dirty work. And it turns out Hazza is more than good enough. Always good for a multi-frag and an impact play. He's kind of the standout right now for X-Divals. 17 and 10. He pop track back. <laughs> Cross over towards the gate there. Almost gets caught with the gloss. He wasn't expecting to cop that much damage straight through the Molotov, but... He does get out with his life and a two-man advantage for x Diabolfs. They're going to be quite happy with how this round started. Ooh. Yeah, this is pretty much the dream start to the half for LFO. Mm. A couple of taps from Hazard as well ensures that the B-bomb site is well and truly defended. And it's towards A where anything is going to happen. And Sterling with the Famous doesn't exactly have the ideal weaponry to be taking this dual grenade in a hand. But obviously quite safe behind the corner and so Jara can't get much done. Bomb plant won't even be allowed by APOC. 11 to 7. Stretches the lead out a little bit for LFO. It's... Certainly their game to lose at this point in time. They're up 1-0 and zero in terms of the series scoreline. And a sizable enough lead on this CT side to make you think that they are the team that should be looking to close this one out at the moment. It's, it's all to trying to salvage, trying to come back into it, but no thoughts of being the team to win map 2 just yet. Got the ult from Ricky, but it had to be glass cannons. Maybe if that plant did get down, it would have been a little bit of a different story. Long control's been given. No contest from X Direwolves. They've gone for cat control instead. This is where you're looking at their buy. No orb for them. They've got to leverage these Famuses and MP9. So they've got to play a little bit unorthodox. They can't just play a straight up kind of setup on a round like this, or they're going to kind of be bullied. And this is where I love seeing plays exactly like that. Aggression in towards upper dark. Double nade into lowers. Valiance has got this one in check, though. But he is smoked off. So, X Direwolves, they've taken tunnels in the mid round. How does Order respond? They've got long control. So, each one of these teams has secured an extremity. X Direwolves going to vacate upper dark and go back into a more sort of passive normal setup where majority of them on the A side of the map playing from sight and cat. Relying on that one way on site. This is a very weird situation for Order to be put in. They're going to go retake yeah. up a dark. It looks like they might be making the correct decision in heading towards the B bomb site because it is, at the moment, relatively undefended. It's Hazard with the M4, so there is that to think about. You can't get more than the one, which is not really quite enough for LFO in this situation. It means they're locked out of the B site. They've. <laughs> Given up full control of A, so they're going to get flanked here as well. I can't imagine this works out nicely. And that should be the round for order. Apoc might have something to say about it as he tries to creep through the, the double doors in that smoke. Sterling grabs one as well, and Valiant spots the shadow. Apoc knows he can't go back outside now. He's going to try and sit on that defuse for a second, which comes through. Too many to deal with. Wow. It really kind of came down to that entry onto the B-bomb site, didn't it? If Hazard gets two, maybe there's a world for, for LFO. But the one for one, uh, I mean, as decent as it is in normal situations, not enough this time. That was a great round of CS. 
That round had so many layers to it. That was beautiful to watch. You had the upper dark aggression. B being taken over by direwolves. Then order with the personnel they have at A, which is only two. Throw cross smokes and make it look like an A execute. Then walk on to B and trade one for one. That was no, beautiful. That, that was that just one... a very solid round. Put that one in the notebook, Pilski, for a skybox segment later on somewhere. I don't think we're doing them on, on green hack this time, Jordan. I'm just saying you could use it on any show. All right. Round 19. Dust 2. Remember that one, Jordan. You're writing it down, right? I'll write it down. Okay. Either way, though, this is the proper buy round. This is where we get the, the big guns out. The alts for both of the squads. Big utility advantage in the mid to late round for order, though. They've got... Four players with pretty much a full kit of nades. This is where Direwolves, they don't have a whole lot of information about what's happening. They have again conceded long control. They're playing from Catwalk. And they're looking for something. They're looking for information. Aggression from APOC in towards Lower Dark. Good kill for APOC to grab. Full control of Lower Dark. He's going to pick up the pace as well. They were not expecting that! APOC! Oh, he's gotten away with so much! And Savage unceremoniously loses his head. Or Gyra, rather, unceremoniously loses his head. It was Savage doing the, the head losing shooting. But, I mean, how's he gotten away with this? I, I don't know. I think that's one of those A-Bot plays, man, where he just pushes something you don't expect him to push. Like the lower dark aggression, yeah, fair enough. He's pushing in the mid-round, he's looking for info. But full sprinting, straight up lower dark into uppers and catching two order players with nades in hand. That's that's a classic a -bot play. Oh, Ricky! He gets it done with the USP. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. As long as the kills come through, who cares what it looked like? <laughs> Dicey, you're so dicey, Jordan. <laughs> Gonna got some rifles in hand, mate. Oh, boy. Bit of a clencher for ex Direwolves. Wouldn't have wanted to donate those guns over. And in general, their money's quite shaky. They don't want to They don't wanna give too many guns away here. They need to win this with four alive if possible. Well, they should be able to, barring some pretty banger shots out from Vexai now. Sees here at that range, I wouldn't really back him. Has a, I mean, he's got the perfect situation there, doesn't he? SG in hand, able to just tap away, and 13 to 8. I mean, I feel like it's starting to get a little bit precarious now for order. If they don't answer it here, then they might not get the opportunity to answer. Yeah, would agree with you for the most part. Mining's not super solid for X-Diables, and they have no loss bonus, so... Look, Order, they can potentially go for this reset. They just need to win two gun rounds back to back, and they're back in this game. It's anyone's game, but they're running out of room. Good start. Spam onto APOC, puts him quite low. Catwalk control taken this time for Order. Last couple of rounds, X Diables very focused on the center of the map, focused on taking that Catwalk control this time. They're switching it up. They've gone for the long control. And this is where you're looking at Sterling. How many highlights has this man had on the A site with the AWP on Dust 2? Too many to count. Folks been given a bit of room to work back into mid. Pretty stock sanded stuff so far from LFO. Decisions to be made for order though. What a util to play with. They've got some control in the mid. Pop flash through the doors. It's going to send Gyra on a bit of an expedition. Clearing out that area of the map. But now, counter flashes through from LFO. 11 HP only for Apoc. So he doesn't feel so confident and comfortable taking these jewels. Eventually, he's taken down by Ricky. Which will leave Licky to work around the smoke and... He's got Gyra up, might have even gotten a second there on a Ricky if he would have picked up the pace instead of slowing things down. He mentioned Sterling, <laughs> Sterling earlier in the round. That first kill from Sterling, as soon as that comes out, ought to go, nope, no. we're going to the other side. <laughs> they start to get past a couple. One of them is Licky. The other one is going to be Hazard, who, with now that information coming through, gets a helping hand from Sterling, to be honest, and makes it look easy. Bomb, way too far away for Ricky. Time out of the picture.
And it'll be LFO up to 14. Dear God. The 2-0. It's, yeah. looking, it's looking clean. It's looking convincing. LFO are looking composed and focused here in DreamHack Open 46. This is exactly what we wanted to see from these lads. The thing with LFO is that, uh, especially before APOC does come in, as we get the tactical timeout from Warda, um, you know, we're kind of looking at the last season of ANZ Champs. I was kind of thinking to myself, yeah, they are look really good when Sterling and Hazard have 1.7 ratings and when they're bashing second rate teams. But this game is showing the potential of LFO realized in its fullness. They are very convincingly beating a quality squad in order. And looking like they're about to do it in 2-0 fashion, upsetting them on their own map pick with some great mid-round calling, some great reads, as well as great individual play across the board. This is a squad to look out for. I think we've known that for quite a while, but it is nice to see it reinforced. 14 to 8, a couple of rounds away for LFO. I mean, is there another trick up the sleeves for order? They desperately need it at this point. We mm. saw a, a nice push of like three or four rounds at the end of the half for LFO to push into overtime on Vertigo. Order's going to need much more than that. Yeah. It's the glass cannon door, putting a couple of pistols and a hero rifle around that. Order just buying down to 2k. Effectively giving themselves an outside shot at winning this round, but more or less playing for overtime. Which is going to take seven on the trot or an upset here for them to at least try to secure overtime or make this comeback happen. Smokes down. It's a good cross by setup. Oh, this is too good. Hazza doesn't even need APOC at this point. APOC's like, can I have some fun too? <laughs> Hazza just killing them all. Four this kills. Is, uh, this is like every Redditor's wet dream. They're like Krieg on the CT side. That just sounds OP. Yeah, bro, it is. Remember Krieg meta. Yep. Well, Valiance. Not going to have too much to do at the end of the round. It's 15 up for LFO. And it seems as though they're going to walk it in on Dust 2. You know, Vertigo took a little bit of effort. It wasn't their map choice. That's fair enough. But this is their map choice. Dust 2. And obviously, we're getting to see exactly why they do feel so confident on this one. Order. A seven rounds in a row required to make it to overtime. You wouldn't, you wouldn't back any team, really, to do that. I mean, has this on for the 30, if the game even lasts that long. Long control, wrestled away by order. Aggression up middle from APOC. This is a classic move from APOC. Whenever he's ahead, whenever oh, the yes. pressure's on, this man is always making an unorthodox play that is just going to put the nail in the coffin. Uh, if he gets the timing right, it is going to be a nail banged very hard into that coffin. Water starting to execute out on too long. Sterling watching the line above the smokes. Doesn't quite get the timing right on that shot. And so Order will begin their progression forward. But in doing so, they leave the door open for APOC to come from behind. And he finds the bomb. Now the situation changes. And Order has to look towards plan C. A couple of kills coming through on both sides. But it's well and truly favoring the CT side. APOC hits another one. And Gyra, who was the player lurking over toward B, is required to clutch a one on three to save the day for order. Yeah, I don't think Bomb was meant to be left on Ricky there. Apox on the line towards Hut here, Jordan. Well, it is an isolated aim, Jules. Gyra wins, though, putting them through in the upper bracket against the Renegades.